it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Long before modern humans made their creeds, civilizations, and laws of science previous races like the Chaldeans, Hindus, Egyptians, Greeks, Hebrews, and Tibetans realized and lived within the laws of nature, nature's laws which are known as metaphysics. This website is in dedication to such a true adept of metaphysics. Whilst he was not here to disseminate occult knowledge, he did so because many people wanted to know the truth and by doing so opened their minds. Humans in their ignorance claim nature is unfair, cruel and unjust, or any such claim that fits into their circumstances. You who do not even take the trouble of seeing which way nature's irresistible forces are moving if your life seems to be in turmoil whilst you constantly fight your way through it, is because you are living against the forces of nature. Logically it must follow that if we humans tried to live with nature, by understanding its laws, we would therefore live in harmony and with that become happier, healthier and more successful. Humanity has a destructive desire to do anything regardless of the consequences to all living creatures and the planet. Dr. Rampa was here to discover this serious flaw in humans, which causes humanity to continuously self-destruct. We are the third cycle of sentient beings placed on this planet because the previous two races instigated their own self-destruction, even though they were far more advanced than we are today. If you find this hard to believe, Various anthropologists and paleontologists in our time have since confirmed this to be true as there are relics of said ancient times still clearly visible today. Dr. Tuesday Lobsang Rampa was a recognized incarnated Tibetan abbot and fully qualified medical lama with a special task in life. He did not as many believe come to this planet to write books or even to attempt to disseminate occult knowledge. He came to this earth to do a special task which was to clarify the faults of human beings to others. They wanted to know why we humans have gone wrong yet again, human beings are a failed species. Other people before him came for the same purpose, but all failed. Dr. Rampa succeeded. Dr. Rampa only wrote the 19 books to make money to complete his research work. The fact that these books have helped millions of people all over the globe in various ways is of course extremely good. Another achievement from his books was that he managed to inform the Earth's inhabitants about the real you, why you are here, what you should, and should not be doing, and finally how to progress spiritually regardless of your current beliefs. Another special task was to build an aura camera that would enable any non-clairvoyant to view the aura. By using sounds, colored lights, gemstones, etc., corrections are introduced before the physical body experiences the effects of any failing organ or ailments. People who have never read his material will find much enlightenment in his books. Some may find it very strange or even contradictory to their current beliefs, but do not be put off. The way he wrote his books was masterly as it explained hugely complicated concepts with utmost simplicity that anyone can understand. What Dr. Ramp wrote in his books was from actual personal experiences learned from his many years of teaching so he physically, and spiritually, knew all this to be true, as you can also. An aura camera has been created, more about that within the web page titled Auras. What Dr. Rampa wrote was not his unique knowledge. It is universal knowledge that is freely available to everyone who is willing to open his or her mind and learn. He did have the unique ability and compelling desire to make it simple and understandable, because he wanted everyone to know and understand, unlike many others today who possess knowledge and sadly try to keep it exclusive. It is a great mistake to talk about Dr. Rampa's teaching as though it were his own exclusively, and he would be the first to deny it was. Knowledge is power, however, only if shared and used wisely for the benefit of all living creatures and not just the humans who prefer to keep it exclusively for the sanctimonious. Tuesday Lobsang Rampa was a prince born into one of the high-ranking families of Tibet. Specifically, Tibet, because it was the center of spirituality, being, as it was, inaccessible to the rest of the world. 
As customary in Tibet at that time on his seventh birthday, the senior oracle would read his horoscope. Huge celebrations were planned by his mother, which took weeks to arrange, as invites had to be sent, protocols observed, and much food imported from India and other countries. Finally, the special day arrived and the state oracle spent over two hours reciting the horoscope of Tuesday Lobsang Rampa. Unfortunately, the family were distraught, as it was forecasted that Lobsang was to join the Chakpuri Lamasari, since been destroyed by the Chinese during their invasion early 1900, and not become heir to the family estate. To that end, his own family rejected him completely. As foretold in his first bestseller book The Third Eye and the story continues in as it was. Dr. Rampa only ever wrote 19 books highlighting much valued spiritual and physical information. Every bit very true as you will discover if you remain open-minded and practice. You may find some topics hard to believe or comprehend at first, yet do not let this put you off. There is an old English saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Therefore, you will not comprehend metaphysics just after reading one book. Like all important things in life, it takes time, dedication, and continuous practice. How much time and practice depends on you, and only you. There does have to be some sacrifices if you are truly serious in learning metaphysics, e.g. no alcohol, no drugs, no stealing, no casual sex, no gambling, to name a few. On a positive side, the spiritual gains outweigh the physical a hundredfold, if not greater. Consider this, all mundane everyday things we do are completely trivial. Will it matter in 50 years time that your local superstores were selling high-definition flat-screen televisions at below cost today? Will it matter that you haven't got the latest designer clothing or smartphone? On the other hand, it will matter to you in 50 years time how you progress now for keep this very thought in mind no man or woman has ever succeeded in taking a single penny beyond this life. Yet every man and woman take all the knowledge and experiences they have gained in this life to the next life, and that is the purpose of why people are here on earth, to learn. So, are you going to take worthwhile knowledge to the other side or just a useless clutter of unrelated thoughts? This is a matter that you should engage your earnest attention, as it will affect your future incarnations. When we mention the word metaphysics, most ill-informed people swiftly think of the occult, rapidly followed by black magic. This is because humans fear that which they do not understand. Metaphysics has become buried within the dust of superstition and charlatanism, but it refers to the understanding and fundamentals of nature in all its realities whether visible or invisible, more so of the latter. The occult is concerned with the knowledge of things that are beyond the ordinary mundane senses of the body both evil and good, as one cannot exist without the other. These extremities give us a capacity from which we can understand and learn. Good cannot exist without evil, light cannot exist without darkness, and poverty cannot exist without wealth. Without extremes, how can anything exist? Like it or not, they are part of life. Metaphysics cannot be measured by concrete methods because it is dealing with matters beyond the ordinary everyday senses of the body. Therefore, modern-day science will not understand when they think only their laws are real or their views count. It was the Hindus who discovered what is known as the precession of the equinoxes, and in their calculations, such an occurrence takes place every 25,827 years. It took modern science many years to confirm and acknowledge its accuracy. Waiting just for Western science to prove something that only you can personally experience, is much like the ignorant hungry person holding his or her mouth open waiting for a roasted partridge to fly into it. Metaphysics is as natural as breathing or walking and yet it is omitted by the masses unless it has been made interesting in a heartbreaking way or otherwise it's regarded as some ancient mystical mumbo-jumbo. Sadly, much knowledge that is currently available has been dressed up to the point it is inferred today as make-believe. 
Lobsang strips away the superfluous and tells it as it is in simple terms that anyone with an ounce of common sense can recognize, understand, and study. Everything Dr. Rampa wrote is 100% true. Do not just dismiss it because your beliefs differ or because you have never heard about the topics he covers. We have since had confirmation from the other side that they considered his life a success. We who believe him continue to strive in keeping his books alive as they contain very important information that anyone can benefit from. The only thing in life to fear is fear itself, which is just something you do not understand yet. As you do not fear that which you comprehend, or do you? We are still in the age of Kali the age of destruction and final quadrant of the four cycles brought on in full force by the First World War. However, it will be over soon as the pendulum of life reaches its zenith. The earth is still in a negative phase and like all cycles, it must end one day. Once humanity changes their ways we will venture forward towards a golden age via the age of Aquarius. Humanity's worst enemy is himself, or herself, and no one else. The darkest hour is just before the dawn, and dawn is coming. Thirteenth Candle, Chapter 8 This is the age of Kali, the age of disruption, the age of change when mankind stands at the crossroads deciding to evolve or devolve deciding whether to go upwards or whether to sink down to the level of the chimpanzee. And in this, the age of Kali, I, Dr. Rampa have come to give some knowledge and perhaps to weigh a decision to Western man and woman that it is better to study and climb upwards than to sit still and sink down into the slough of despond.